Old Brooklyn Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recover of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed old brooklyn christian church we're good uh welcome again everyone to old brooklyn christian church today's message is called true foundation and the reason why i believe the lord gave me the message true foundation is because there is a lot of false foundations there is a lot of unproven uh foundations amen, amen. but i found out through personal experience that there is a true foundation a foundation that will never leave you or forsake you a true foundation that you can depend on amen, amen. and that is jesus christ amen. the definition of true means to be accurate to be honest just steadfast loyal legitimate consistent how many of you know all those describe jesus christ Amen. how many of you know jesus christ when he speaks to you he speaks to you accurately how many of you know when he speaks to you he speaks to you in honesty he speaks to you just steadfast means that he continues on amen he doesn't just uh be with us for a little bit and then he quits and give up but sometimes we quit and give up on him but he don't quit and give up on us he remains loyal uh, he is legitimate he is consistent conformable to a standard a standard or a pattern amen foundation means a body or a ground upon which something is built up an underlying base or permanent support amen how many know a support that's not permanent is really not a support see in prison they had something called tc community which means therapeutic community and what they would do is they would try to establish a community or an environment for the inmates so that they can change and it worked as long as the inmates remained in that therapeutic community but the moment they went home or the moment they got released they would end up falling back into their own ways because they were dependent on their surroundings they were dependent on that community which was just temporary and that will not cause a change but how many of you know if you get right with jesus christ and he fills you with the holy spirit it will give you a real change a true change not something that is temporary it's not something that is uh questionable but he can give you a real change amen this is the problem with a lot of treatment centers a lot of rehabilitation centers that they can help someone for that moment but eventually when you leave that place even if you go to AA, how many know that can help you for that hour that can help you for that day but how many know there's always a next day and you're going to need something that goes above and beyond that. Amen. And what I found out is that Jesus Christ is the true foundation. Amen. Amen. Living for materialism is not the purpose of life. Amen. A lot of folks, their whole goal, their whole agenda in life is to live for things, for materialism, for house, for jobs, for money. And how many of you know eventually you'll find out in a certain circumstance that those things won't sustain you. They won't keep you, which is why you have a lot of rich people. They end up dying of cancer. They end up dying of sickness because their money could not keep them alive. Even the richest person in the world, eventually he's going to die. Amen. Which tells me that my purpose of life can't be for materialism. Amen. 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 You know, there's, uh, they have the uh, Black Friday. They have all these sales where I see uh, on dif different holidays, you'll see folks will stand outside of stores. They'll pitch tents. They'll stay overnight. They'll be there for a day or two waiting for the doors to open, for the sales to open. They'll trample over people, kill other people, try to save a dollar. They'll sacrifice their time. They'll sacrifice going to church. They'll miss church over it. They'll miss spending time eating uh, their dinner with their family. Why? Because they're so focused on materialism. Yeah. Amen. And I got to tell you that that's a miserable way to live life. And it won't bring satisfaction. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12, we have Apostle Paul. He discusses the different types of foundations that are not going to sustain us. Amen? Amen. 
Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And that fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. See, if you look at a Christian and you look at an unbeliever, a lot of times they look exactly the same, right? You can see they're both going to work. They both have a job. They both have a home. They both uh, might have a level of worldly success. And if just by looking from a, a, a spectator's perspective, perception and just looking outside in and you're looking at if you're uh, agnostic or you're questioning whether you should be a Christian or not or you're debating on whether the Bible's true or whether you really want to follow Christ and you're looking at a Christian and you're looking at an unbeliever if you look at them at any point in time you can see that there might not be a huge difference right but when the time comes where they are tried by fire and they lose their job or they both lose their job or one of their family members die or something happens that they didn't anticipate, that's when you can see the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian, a believer and an unbeliever. And this is what the Bible is saying. It says, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall be declared, it shall be revealed by fire. Amen? A lot of times when we're doing good, we don't look any different from the world. The world's happy when they're doing good. Christians are happy when we're doing good. But what should set us apart is that even though we're tried by fire, even though things don't go our way, we should still stay on course. We should still stay on the narrow road because our foundation is not of this world. Our foundation is on Christ. Amen? Amen. Peter said, upon this rock, I will build my church. He said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, Peter. It was the revelation of who Jesus Christ was. God revealed it to Peter that he was the rock. And if you try to build a church on anything other than Jesus, in time, tried by fire, it won't last. This is why a lot of churches have shut down. If, as I was uh, riding with some brothers and sisters in the Lord going down Pearl Road, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing out all the churches that shut down. Not to brag or be boastful, but you can see that their foundation wasn't on Christ. Their foundation was on 501c3 grants from the government. Their foundation was on an, organiza an organization. And when they stopped cutting off the funding to the church, the church fell apart because their foundation was not on Christ. Right. And it might look like the churches seem to be thriving and strong and doing well, but I got to tell you, if their foundation is on gold, eventually it won't last because gold is not promised silver is not promised and it says if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon he shall receive a reward if any man's work shall be burned he shall suffer loss but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Amen? You're going to go through fiery trials. You're going to go through hardship. But you have to look at it as being a process of the Lord working on you. Amen? Amen. Without a vision from God, people are easily used by the devil. You know, I've had people that were close to me in my life. They, they wanted me to get involved in these get-rich-quick schemes. Although they didn't know that they were schemes at first. And they would introduce me to them, and they would try to get me to enroll in them or to sign up and give my personal information in it. And the Lord, I would pray about it. I didn't, it's not that I didn't trust the person. In fact, I'm still close friends with this person. But it's just that I need the Lord to lead me and guide me in what I'm doing. I can't just jump on, on board with things that, that God didn't tell me to do. Amen. And so I prayed about it, and the Lord didn't tell me to join these uh these programs to make money and and the way he sold it to me he sold it to me so smooth 
He was like, oh man, you, you can't go wrong. Showed me pictures of paychecks and, and, and money that people were making and, and, and showed me emails of testimonies of all the success that people were doing. But the Lord still told me, don't be part of it. So I told him no, and he was offended. He was like, man, I know you're struggling financially. You can use this. This will help you. He was actually looking for ways not only just to make him money, but to actually help me with good intentions. And I kept telling him, no, no, no. And he kept telling me, and he was like, oh, I got a check in the mail. It's great. And he's showing, texting me pictures of it. And he's like, you got to enroll with this. And the Lord kept telling me, no, no. And I kept telling him, no. And then a couple months later, the whole organization, the whole company was arrested for fraud. Arrested. And all that money that he received from this company... He had to pay it back. And I got to tell you, when you're already struggling financially, and then you get money that comes to you that you, can, you need or you can use, and then you spend it, and then now you got to pay back what you already spent. How many know God allowed me to avoid that bullet? See, when you're on the foundation of Christ, the true foundation, you will be the one who will stand while other people will fall. It's not because you're better than them. In fact, it's actually the opposite. It's because you're not better than them. It's because you know that you're weak, that you know that you have to depend on Christ and not your own intelligence and not logic and not by sight, but by faith, God will be your foundation. And then it'll be proven over time, not right away. Because that look, if you would have caught him at one point in time, he looked like he was more successful than me. It looked like he was doing better than me. If you would have caught us both at the same time, it would have looked like, why am I going through this struggle and he's doing so good? But then over time, the true foundation remains. And God will bear witness to his children. He will let signs and wonders follow them that believe. Them that believe don't chase after signs and wonders. Signs and wonders follow us. Right. Why? It's confirmation that we are in the will of God. Right. Amen. Without a vision from God, people are easily used by the devil. Amen. In Luke 22, verses 3, it says, Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Issachar, being of the number of the twelve. Greed. And this is what happened with Judas. You can see Judas had a struggle with money from the get-go. When someone was pouring uh, oil or perfume over the feet of Christ, oh, couldn't that money have been used? Couldn't that perfume been sold and given to the poor? He didn't care nothing about the poor. He was only thinking about himself because he was over the treasury. He was over the money, and that's all he was focused on. He didn't have a real vision from God. It says Satan entered into Jews. How many of you know if you have the love of money in your heart, you are going to be manipulated and deceived by the enemy? It's just a matter of time. And for those of you that don't know me, I don't preach prosperity message and I do not preach poverty message. I preach the word of God. I believe God sometimes prospers folks and then sometimes God allows folks to be in poverty. Neither one of them prove that you're in or out of the will of God. Amen. But not by that. In Matthew 26, 14, the Bible says, it says, Then one of the twelve, called Judas Issachar, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. See, when Jesus Christ is not satisfying your soul, when Jesus Christ is not enough for you, then you're looking at what you can get out from him. See, a lot of times when folks go to a church, they're not looking for what they can contribute to the church. They're not looking at what they can give to the church. They're not looking where there's a need in the church and how they can serve in the church or how they can be a benefit and bless other people. Most folks are not spiritually Christ-minded. They're carnally minded, and they're going to find what they can get out of the church, what they can take from the church, what they can use from the church, how the church can benefit them. They don't have the mind of Christ. 
And therefore, they don't get blessed the way that God wants them to get blessed. They have the mind of Judas. Look at what he said. Look at what he said. And he said unto them, what will you give me? Wow. He already had Jesus. He was eating with Jesus. He watched the miracles of Jesus. He watched the, the sacrifice of Jesus. He watched the power of Jesus. In spite of all that, it wasn't enough for him. He still asked the question, what can you give me? See, when I became a Christian and filled with the Holy Spirit and I got born again and I got saved, when I joined a church, I asked the Lord, Lord, how can I give to this church? How can I be a blessing? Lord, how can you use me? And I was poor as poor as poor. Freshly released from prison, had nothing, no money, no clothes, nothing but a criminal record. And I still ask the question, Lord, how can you use me at this church? How can I be a benefit? And that's what I did. I served. And it wasn't long before God kept taking care of me. Right. Amen. How many know Judas was stuck on how he felt? He felt entitled. He felt like he deserved more than what he already had in Jesus. Wow. He asked the question again and said unto them, what will you give me? See, when you don't have the true foundation, you're looking for what you can get. He says, and I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted, they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver, which means they made an agreement. They made a contract. And from that point, he sought an opportunity to betray him. The worst feeling is the regret of being deceived. Have you ever been deceived before? Has anyone ever tricked you before? Has anyone ever lied to you and you put your trust in them and then you found out through time that they manipulated you? That they took advantage of you? That they told you something that wasn't accurate at your expense? I got to tell you, that's going to happen more and more and more when you don't have the true foundation. That's right. Amen. And on that note, the best feeling is overcoming deception. Yes. I got to tell you, I didn't feel, I didn't feel good that my friend was deceived by this get-rich-quick scheme. I didn't feel good that he lost money and that he had to pay it back. I didn't feel good about it. It didn't make me happy. But on the same sense, I felt so joyful, so thankful that I was not deceived. Amen. And when God shows you that you overcame a deception of the enemy, you feel, good. You feel real good. Matthew 27, verses 3. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? Seest thou to that? And he cast down the 30 pieces of silver in the temple and departed, and he went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful for them to put into the treasury because it is the price of blood. So in other words, the money that the chief priest gave Judas to betray Jesus, he had what he wanted. He betrayed Jesus. He didn't have the true foundation. He was willing to betray Jesus for money. And after he got what he wanted... He no longer wanted it because it no longer satisfied him. And then he tried to give it away. Actually, he threw it down. And then even the chief priests, they didn't even want it. They called it blood money. They called it cursed. 
They ended up using that money for a Potiphar's field, which was to bury dead bodies. They bought land and a plot to bury dead people yep. with that 30 pieces of silver. Because when your true foundation is not Jesus Christ, that's all you can do is die. How many have ever strived for something and after you got it, you no longer wanted it anymore? You fought tooth and nail to accomplish something and then after you accomplished it, it no longer mattered to you anymore. I've discovered this thing is that we always want what we don't have and when we got what we wanted, we no longer want it. It's almost like, you ever see in the wild? You ever see in Africa or in the jungle? You ever see animals chasing another animal and then after they catch the animal they don't even eat it they just play with it and then sometimes even let it go it's just because they enjoyed the chase and I think sometimes when we don't have the true foundation we just enjoy the chase There has been so many times in my life, I'm like, oh, I gotta have this, I gotta have this, I gotta have this. Especially before I was a Christian. Especially before I was born again. Especially before I was covered on the blood of Jesus. There were things that would possess me, and I had this idea that I had to have something. And then as soon as I got it, for about a week or two, I was on top of the world. And then the next two weeks, I didn't care nothing about it anymore. I was on to the next thing. And that's how life is. Just like Judas, willing to betray innocent blood. True wisdom is building our life upon Jesus. Amen. 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 True wisdom is building our life upon Jesus. See, before I was a Christian... Before I was a pastor, I used to be a carpenter. I used to be a carpenter. And yes, my name is Joseph. <laughs> I was in Local 95, and one of the jobs that I did was I did concrete form work. And concrete form work is one of the least desirable positions or jobs in the union. And the reason why is because when you're pouring the concrete, the concrete is splattering all over. You're getting concrete all over. Your, you're, it's like a pig rolling around in the mud. And you're pouring it in the hot sun or you're pouring it in the freezing cold. And you've got to work with the, the rebar to put it inside. Then you've got to build the forms. They got she bolts, you have sledgehammers, you got to knock those things out after the concrete is laid and hardened. It was one of the hardest jobs I ever did. Thank God I was a lot younger back then because if I were to have to do that type of work, I would, I don't know. I would beg the Lord to give me something else. I respect carpenters, I respect uh, construction workers. They deserve more than what they get paid. And I risked my life multiple times doing concrete form work. I could have died multiple times. I was up on uh, I beams, 60 feet up in the air with no uh, no uh, harness, no no safety measures at all. I had to go on this little tiny I beam. I was scared to death. Some of the dirtiest, hardest jobs on a construction site is doing the foundation. But it's also the most important job on a construction is the foundation. Because if the foundation is not correct, it doesn't matter what you do after that. If the concrete didn't harden the proper way, if it's got cracks in it, if it's got bubbles in it, if it's not true, if it's not accurate, if it's not the right depth, if they didn't dig deep enough to pour that foundation, if it's not supported properly, if they didn't go long enough, then whatever they do after that might look good 
for a short period of time, but eventually it will fall apart. Sometimes we try to live our life doing a, working a good job, earning money, getting our family together, getting our house together, but we don't have our spiritual relationship with Jesus Christ together, and whatever we do outside of that is eventually going to fall apart. Amen. But how many know Jesus Christ laid down the foundation for us so we didn't have to? He paid the price on the cross. He died for our sins so that we could be saved. He did the hardest, dirtiest job so that we don't have to. We don't have to earn our salvation. We can't deserve our salvation. It's by grace. Amen. It's by God's mercy. The Bible says according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation, for other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Could I tell you I tried relationships outside of Christ? And guess what happened? It fell apart. But now, I tried a marriage with Jesus Christ. And it's lasting. It's now becoming fruitful. Because the foundation is not lust. It's not looks. It's not money. No. The foundation is Jesus. Amen. And it's working. Amen. And sometimes folks are on a bad foundation and they keep trying to build. I got to tell you, sometimes you need to know when to move Amen. and get out of that condemned house. Destroy it. Totally wipe it out all the way down to the foundation. Get rid of the foundation. And start totally new. It says, for other foundation can no man lay than this that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. I got to tell you, I found out the hard way. I, I, I didn't believe it, didn't want to do it. I got to tell you that Jesus Christ was my last choice. Was not my first choice. He was my last choice. And then I realized that my last choice was my best choice. Amen. Amen. You got people that they want their foundation to be education. I've watched educated doctors, highly educated, hard workers with PhDs. I've watched them fall apart. I've watched them lose everything. I've watched, I've watched them go to school for 15 years. I've watched them go to medical school and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on their education and not spend one penny in the house of God. I've watched them spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on entertainment and not give God a penny. And I've watched them lose everything that they had and someone come behind them and take everything that they had. Their whole life that they worked for everything. Come right behind them. Someone that was serving God. Come right behind them and take up everything. For just about free. Why? Be, be, not that that person was a bad person. Was it because they weren't smart or intelligent? It's that they didn't have a true foundation. They were raised being taught that the most important thing on this earth is that you have a proper education. That you go to college and you get a degree. And that you get a good job. All those things are not wrong. It's not bad advice. But it's not the best advice. The best advice is that you need a true foundation so that when you go through hard times, your education ain't going to help you. When you go through hard times, your money ain't going to help you. You're going to need a true foundation that is going to be dependable. Amen. And that's why Apostle Paul came to his mind. That's why Peter came to his mind. 
He said, Thou art the Son of God, the Christ. For other foundation can no man lay. What kind of foundation are you trying to lay? Old Brooklyn Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed old brooklyn christian church